Soil tests. <laughs> Why do people freak out about this? We're gonna go over soil testing today and I'm gonna keep it. I'm not gonna get super, super in depth. I think that confuses a lot of people and that's where a lot of people make mistakes. I'm gonna sort of simplify it. So hold on one sec. Hey guys, uh, don't forget I cover some of this in the Bermuda Lawn Guide, so make sure you get the Bermuda Lawn Guide. By the way, if you haven't signed up for our email list, we're doing some giveaways this year, so make sure you look. go over to the website and look for the email list. Last year we did uh, $5,000 in checks. We finally got the last check out. We gave away real mowers. We gave away a bunch of stuff, so make sure you sign up over there while you're there and subscribe, of course, so you don't miss my new hat collection this Ooh. year. <laughs> it's a present from my daughter. Isn't that nice? So let's talk about soil testing. First of all, what do you need? Uh, I'll show you a soil probe that I use. You don't have to have a soil probe. You can just use a shovel or a trowel. We're just gonna be digging down. Um, you do need some kind, usually soil bags. Now these sample bags, I actually get these on Amazon. Uh, I buy a 50 pack and just stick them in the drawer. And so each year when I need them, I just put them, take them out and, and use these. Uh, then you're gonna need to figure out where you're gonna send it. Now I like Clemson and I'll put a link in the description below. I always put every video on its own web page. So this video I will post up on its own web page with related information about soil information, testing, pH, and I'll link to a download where you can download this page. So this is, I use Clemson and this is their page and this is one of the reasons why I use it. I don't have to fill out paperwork for every single sample. All I do is I just put my information and then all my samples can go down below, listed below. So I can put my front lawn, back lawn, my putting green, my garden, I can do tests whatever I want, it's all on one page. The basic test, which is what I recommend you get, is $6 per sample, and just add it up and send a check, put it in a box, and you're ready to go. Uh, so I will link to, on the, on the website, I link to, a, you click it and it'll download to your computer and then you can print that off. But I like Clemson, it's just simple, it's so easy to use. You, of course, you can go to your local extension office, um, but to me, this just saves me so much time because it's a Sunday afternoon and I want to get this done, so I go do it. I'll also put a link to a chart, to a pH range chart. I'll probably put it up on the screen here too. But that pH range chart is really important to understand. So that'll all be on that web page. So this is a good time. I, winter time is actually a good time to do a soil test, but this is also a good time. You can do your soil test any time of year but I really strongly encourage you to do this. But I don't want you to overinterpret the soil test results and I don't necessarily want you to follow their recommendations. And let me explain. They're gonna say put X amount of nitrogen, pounds of nitrogen, and we, well, we know that. We're gonna be putting that out. They're gonna say um, put this out. We're gonna be putting that stuff out because we're using a 1648 fertilizer. So it's a 1648, a 412 ratio, which is what all the extension offices recommend for every single lawn out there, except for maybe centipede. So that's why we use PGF Complete. It's the number one recommended ratio. I repeat that over and over. So we're gonna be putting out phosphorus and we're gonna be putting out potassium. So if your soil is a little bit low, don't go out looking for a fertilizer like a 040 zero fertilizer to throw in your lawn because we're gonna be putting out phosphorus. So if your lawn is a little bit low, it's fine. We'll be putting it out. If your lawn is a little bit low in potassium, we're going to be putting it out. If it's low on, I never really look at the micros. I never pay attention to the micros because we're going to be applying micros. What I look for, there are two main things I look for in my soil test. And that are, and that is weird spikes, great imbalances, and my pH. And I'll explain those weird spikes if i have a real high phosphorus spike then instead of putting out traditional pgf complete you're going to switch over to pgf 1608 so the zero is phosphorus we don't want to add more phosphorus if we have high phosphorus levels if we have low phosphorus levels then we can just stick with the with the regular pgf complete we'll be adding phosphorus and the reason why i say that is because phosphorus really stays in your soil um, a long time, especially if you're putting down humichar. So you don't want to overload your lawn with phosphorus. Just do normal treatments, that's fine. Um, just look for weird spikes. The other thing you want to look for is, is look at your pH. Why is that important? Let me put this down. Here's the line 
on this graphic that I'm talking about. So this is where my pH is supposed to be. So let's say 6.5 or 6.8 is where the best pH is for my lawn. Well, if I go lower on the scale, I start to lose or it's harder for my lawn to pick up some nutrients. If I go higher on that scale, it becomes more difficult for my lawn to pick up those nutrients, as an example. So here is my perfect pH range here. When I start to go over, when I start to go up higher, it's really hard for my lawn to get iron because iron likes to be, iron is more easily absorbed on the lower pHs. Nitrogen, if you start to fall down here, it can still be taken up, but it's a little more difficult. And this just shows you what examples, why the pH is important. It just gets harder for your plants to use to get those chemicals and use those nutrients at different pHs. Now, I will tell you that pH is very hard. So if you have a really low pH, you're going to put down lime. If you have a really high pH, you're probably going to put down sulfur. But it's really hard to change soil pH and it takes a long time. So if you have like a 5.5, you're going to come out and you're going to lime your yard. Only if you get a soil test, you will lime and try and bring that up and bring that up. But it takes time. I mean, to get down, to try and raise pH six inches in the soil, it takes a lot of lime. So the basic formula for the majority of people is going to be 100 pounds of lime for 1,000 square feet to raise your lawn pH one point. Now that's a lot of lime and you have to put it out incrementally. You don't want to go out and dump 100 pounds of lime for every 1,000 square feet. You want to break this apart and do it over time. Um, I believe it is Clemson also has a liming chart over there, and I'll try and find it. It tells you how many pounds to raise it up to a certain level, and that can get a little confusing. That's, it's just a hard, hard process to raise pH. Plus, I don't like to do it in the summertime. I think trying to adjust your pH in the summer is hard. So you could probably do, let's say you needed a treatment now, you could put one down now and then start in the fall and really try and adjust your pH in the winter time. Now I do have a pH meter and I'll grab it here in a minute. Um, the pH meter works okay. pH meters are just not that great, especially the cheap ones. This one is pretty accurate from what I've seen. Uh, and I will go out and spot treat my pH. I will typically break down my backyard and what I'll do is I'll stay away from low-lying areas. So I don't want to go into areas that have water pooling in them. Uh, that can throw off your results. So I'm going to stay, this slopes down, so I'm going to take the middle and I'm going to go test, 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 test. And I'll test down here and I'll do a backyard test. I'll do a front yard test. Anywhere that's really extremely different. So my front versus my back. I'll test my garden soil. Um, we're actually sending in dirt booster, which is kind of cool. We send in the dirt booster and uh, it just blows. What it, when the report comes back, it's funny because it's just off the charts. <laughs> it's crazy. It's just so loaded with nutrients. The other thing I'll do, yesterday I came out here and I tested, I pulled samples from the green and uh, I'll show you me doing that. Have a pen and I just, on this, you don't have to have any special coating. I just put FL for front lawn, RL for rear lawn, um, and then it says if you have your own code, you just write your own code in there and it'll show you. They will email you results in a nice little uh, report. Usually it takes about a week or two typically, depending on how busy they are. Let me explain what you're gonna send off. Here's my grass, here's my thatch layer. I don't want to send that off. I want to send this layer right here. This is what I want to send. So <clears throat> go below your thatch layer and send about two or three, about two or three inches below your thatch. That's all you want to do. That's all you want to send off. So I'll take that and get that, put that in the bag and let it dry out. Man, this soil's wet. Let me show you one trick I've learned with this clay nasty soil. I always, I'm, somewhere I'm going to have a brick around somewhere, but I'm going to come up. I'm going to take my sample, push it up, 
I'm just going to get rid of that upper, that upper layer. And now my soil sample comes out nice and pretty. Now you can see on the green, it looks a lot different. Lots of sand in here mixed in with this because we built this up. But the same procedure. Now on my green, I am not going as deep. I only want the first two inches on my green. So, <laughs> so I started working on this video this morning and then I actually ran to Lowe's. I had to pick up a few things and I actually went up to the entrance of the subdivision. I had to do some treatments up there. Uh, I volunteer to do it up there and then about half an hour ago man the skies just opened up <laughs> these thunderstorms are crazy so look at see this right here it's more of those tiger stripes but you know why they're yellow pine pollen look at that isn't that crazy so I grabbed my camera and actually was in the garage and I shot Yellow River running down my driveway and it's all this pine pollen. But here we are again, more tiger stripes from these clippings. You hear that? <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, I don't see any plant damage around, which is good. So anyways, um, Soil testing is really important. Um, it's a guessing game. Every extension office that you go to, when you look at um, your recommended ratios, they will say, in the absence of a soil test, use a 412 ratio for all lawns. All lawns. Centipede, you might want to, it doesn't like phosphorus. All lawns, 412 ratio. Every single extension office out there, period. <laughs> That's why we use PGF Complete. That's why it's formulated that way. So a soil test now will tell you if you need to change that at all. And typically it's either high or low phosphorus. And again, if it's low phosphorus, just stick with the PGF Complete because you're putting down phosphorus and it stays in your soil. If it's high phosphorus, then go to the 1608 and you might want to add a little bit of um, a liquid iron treatment in there. So anyway, guys, guys, that's just sort of a summary on soil test. Hope it helped. Click subscribe. I got 26 videos popping up here soon. <laughs> I'll talk to you later, Doc.